Hey everybody, it's Allison Haikila. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had shown this card a few weeks back and I had gotten a number of requests on how to replicate this kind of effect, this sort of dimensional um, shadowing that I have going on here with this uh, very, very cool stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. I have it off to the side. I'll show you the, the full stencil in a moment. But I had had a few people asking me how exactly to get this kind of effect, so I figured that I would show you all how it's done. Um, this is one that I shared recently that has the same sort of idea. It's a very different looking stencil. This is part of the, the Neuro Doodles kind of collection by Shannon Green from A Colorful Life Designs. And this one is called Spring Foliage, which is also from A Colorful Life Designs, but obviously it has a very different feel to it, but I did sort of the same thing, but with different mediums. Um, so I thought that I would show you how to do this technique um, using the mediums that I used on this card. And then if you guys are interested, I can show you how I did this one at a later date. Just let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me use other mediums besides what I'm going to show you today, which is going to be Pit Pastels from Fabric Castell. We're going to use these guys. These are fabulous. You can use regular colored pencils too. Um, really, you can use any medium that you want, provided that the paper that you're using will withstand it. So this is just um, a thin sort of um, pattern paper. This is from Kane Company, which I don't even think is in business anymore. <laughs> um, so I didn't want to do anything that was going to be super wet. I knew that a lot of my markers wouldn't work on here. They would just kind of bleed through, which is why I opted for the Pit Pastel pencils. But regular colored pencils would work as well. I would probably steer away from doing watercolor pencils because, again, now you're introducing the, wet, the wetness to the paper, and it really isn't meant to withstand that. On this one, I used Bristol paper and Copics in conjunction with some inks that were already on the, the, the page and whatnot, um, and distress ink. So again, that's a whole nother um, medium. And if you'd like me to do that in another video, just let me know in the comments and I would be happy to do that. So I wanna to talk to you for a minute about the stencils that you can do this with, which honestly is pretty much any of them, as long as you can get into the space to do shading. You don't want to do something that's super, super tiny and you can't get in there with whatever pencil or marker or whatever to get in to get that shading detail. The other thing that we need to keep in mind is the paper that we're using. Now, I mentioned earlier that you want to make sure that whatever paper you're using, it will withstand the medium that you're going to be coloring with. But beyond that, you want to take a look at patterns or lack thereof. Um, because some things are going to work better than others. So for this one, you can see that it's a really simple kind of polka dot with a couple of rings kind of scattered throughout. So it's subtle. It's not super dark as far as, you know, the color of the base paper. This is the base paper here. Um, so I was able to add a lot of shading on top of it without it becoming too dark. But there's things that you want to make sure that you can kind of work with or avoid. Um, so let's talk about paper and then I'll show you some stencil examples. So first of all, here are some things that, in my opinion, you should probably avoid. I would probably not do stripes because, or plaid, because depending on the stencil, especially if you're working with something super organic like this heart one, this is the one that I had used. It's called Neuro Doodle, excuse me, Neuro Doodle Heart, okay, and you know, it just, the styles are totally different. This is super organic looking and free flowing, and this is very rigid. Now I love a good stripe, but in this scenario, something like this wouldn't work. If you were using another type of stencil that wasn't quite so organic, like hexagons or something like that, you can do this. But honestly, I'd probably still avoid it because if you have things slightly askew, I don't know about you, but it would make me bananas. <laughs> I would go crazy. I would want everything to just be just so if I have something that is so clean and so perfect as far as a line or a plaid. So for me, I would just totally avoid it. The other thing, and I love this paper. This is another old Kane Company one. This has glitter on it. You see that? It's textured because of the glitter. So I would avoid using something like this um, because the ink 
and whatever other medium you're going to be using will probably not sit on that glitter or if it's a foiled paper or if it's a glossy paper I would avoid something like this the pattern is great but because it's got that bit of glitter that bit of sparkle and slight dimension I would skip it completely now for things that I would use let's get into that this one is great how pretty is this it's subtle there's a lot of interest happening already in the paper um, and you can easily work on top of it with probably not many mediums because it is just a paper as opposed to a cardstock, but you can get some really cool effects with it because it starts off with a small print that's not overpowering. The paper itself is pretty light so you can easily darken it up and it would just make a great option for what we're doing today. This is another one. It's got a nice print on it but it's not overpowering there's a variation in color you can see it's kind of lighter here and it gets a little darker here um, so there's areas that you can choose to work with um, and this is a heavier weight so it might take other mediums a little bit better the best thing that you can do is just test whatever paper you're working with with, with whatever medium you choose to work with before you get started just to make sure that it's going to work but this is another great option the one that we're going to use today is from this Kaiser Craft pad. This is the greenhouse paper pad. I love this paper pad. And oh, I love this. It's just like paint. <laughs> it's just paint brushed onto paper. And it's still a paper, which is why I don't want to use a very wet medium. Um, it's why we're going to use the Pit Pastel pencils. Um, but it's going to take color beautifully. And it's got a lot of interest without it being overpowering. If you don't have a lot of pattern paper that you want to use, you can always make your own. These are papers that I used um, for other projects. This is from the same session as when I was making this. This is sheet music. You can see the notes here. And then this is Canton mixed media paper. This one is Bristol, but you can see that the colors are all the same because this was all done at the same time. These were made with uh, distress oxide sprays and there might be a little bit of spray stain in here too, but there's Villainous Potion, Salvage Patina, and Crackling Campfire. This has a little bit of something else going on as well. That's um, the Lindy's Magical Powders. But that's, that's what's happening here. So you can make your own too if you don't want to use pattern paper. But I think that a lot of us have pattern paper already and you know we don't use it so often. So let's break it out and, and use it, right? Okay, so again, this card was done with the Neuro Doodle Heart. The other one was done with this one, which is Spring Foliage. I just flipped it this way. And then another great option would be the Doodle Supernova. And the one that we're using today is called Neuro Doodles Circle. Excuse me, Neuro Doodle Circles. <laughs> I had the pluralization in the wrong place. Um, but you don't have to just stick to things like this that are super organic and free-flowing. You can stick to something more rigid. This would be awesome with a hound's tooth. You can totally do it with a stripe. Um, but this is what I wanted to work with because it's so similar to this feel, and I, I thought that you guys would enjoy seeing how this is done. So we're going to get started. I sprayed the back of this already with some pixie spray, and we're going to turn this on its side like so. I'm probably still going to add some tape behind it um, just because I want to make sure that it's really not going to go anywhere. It's some washi tape there. And then I have a little bit more washi that I'll add to the top. And then I'll zoom in and we'll get started. If you have questions about anything that I'm doing here, please don't hesitate to leave a comment about it. And I will definitely get back to you. Okay, so that's good. We're going to zoom in. Okay, I have Peacock Feathers Distress Ink, and I have my Cottontail Blending Brush. I like these brushes because they have white bristles, so it's easy for me to see which, um, which color I've used, which color family. So we're going to just work this in very quickly. I don't want to go super dark or super heavy with the ink because we're going to be doing a lot of detail work with the pencils or the pit pastels and I want to make sure that I don't make my ink blending 
darker than what I'm going to be coloring with later. We j and I also really like this paper, so I don't want to hide everything that's happening. So I'll wind up going heavy with our pit pastels. And we can, of course, check this to see if it's dark enough in relation to everything else. But you can see that on this card, I kept it pretty light. You can see here, it's pretty light. I was heavier where the hearts are to define them. So we can go a little heavier with the circles. We don't have to, but we can. All right, I think that that's pretty good. Nice, okay, we're gonna remove this, put it off to the side, we're done with that for now. Okay, now I'm gonna close up my peacock feathers and we're gonna use these pit pastels. Um, we have, what colors are these? They're not labeled as far as color goes, but I have 153, 151, and 156 here. For this one, I pulled them out to show you, I used a brown and a pink. So you can see if I bring it close up that I started off with brown and then I ended up with a pink there. So don't think that you have to stick to the same color family. Um, obviously these colors are very different from each other, but they worked really well with the paper that I used. Okay, so now we're going to choose where our light source is. Typically, I don't worry about light source too, too much, but in this case, we want our light source to be coming from the same place, so this way the shading looks appropriate. So I think that we're gonna go from here. I think we're gonna make our light source here, which will create our shadows underneath, because we're gonna imagine that it's, these negative spaces are on top of what we're shading, okay? So I'm gonna start with the darkest color here, and I'm just gonna go in like this. And I have a white pit pastel pencil with me as well in case I need to kind of lighten things up a bit. We're just gonna kind of do this and swing around the edge like that. I'm gonna put on my glasses because I'm having a tough time seeing lately. I'm gonna zoom in a little closer too. There we go, okay. Now I'm going in with kind of a dark teal and we're gonna just blend these together. You can see how nicely they smooth out. Just like that. And then we're gonna go in with our lighter shade and just sort of work that in, blending the colors together as we go. See, so it already have sort of that popping up effect. So now I'm gonna go down to this next one. I'm just focusing on the circles right now. We'll, we'll get to the rest later. And don't worry, I won't make you sit through the entire process, but we're just gonna bring this around just like that. This is the medium shade, that teal color. That scratching noise is kind of crazy. I don't know how it sounds to you guys, but it's kind of a weird noise. All right. And now for our last shade. And again, you can do this with whatever medium you want, as long as the paper will accept it. You don't want to work with a wet medium on just regular pattern paper because you'll probably deteriorate your paper pretty quickly. But you can see here how this is starting to really pop up. Um, so I'm going to continue with the rest of these and we'll see how it looks.
finished adding my shadowing and then I sprayed it with a matte fixative. You can choose to do this or not, it's really up to you. These types of pencils tend to, um, you can move them pretty easily, you can smudge them and, and things like that, which is a great quality, but once you're done, you don't necessarily want them to move anymore. So you don't have to do this, but if you choose to spray it with some type of finish or fixative or what have you, um, please make sure that you do it in a well ventilated area. So this is what it looks like and you can make your shadows thicker if you want to or thinner, just play with it, mess around. You know, for this card, I had made them pretty thick and I focused really only on the hearts to make those stand out. Whereas with this one, I went through the whole thing because I thought it would look pretty cool. So now we're going to finish the card up. I have a sentiment from Pink Fresh Studios that is part of their perfect sentiment stamp and die. This is a stamp that has many sentiments on one one stamp and then there's you can cut them all out on one die when you're finished, which is awesome. But I don't really love the white. So I'm going to take the residual ink that's on my pink brush and just kind of soften that white a little bit. I had stamped this in Twilight Versifying Claire ink and I just wanted to soften that white a little bit, add a little bit of color just to tone it down. That's better already because you can see that there's some pink in here. So looks a little harsher on camera than it is in real life, um, but you'll see photos at the end that will kind of depict it a little bit better. For my card base, you know I don't like to leave them white most of the time, so I do have Twisted Citron Distress Ink, which I really need to get in a full size uh, because it's one of my favorite Distress Ink colors. I don't know why I bought it in a little one, but for now, it'll do. So we're just going to go around the whole thing with this, and because I love splatter, we're going to add a little bit of splatter to that um, the background that we made. This color is so vibrant and cool and it works with so many things. I love it. It works really great with this paper. That's so fun. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of splatter and a little bit of shimmer. On the original card that I had done, I added some firework spray just to the bottom to kind of pull out the green that we had in this paper originally. Um, it came like that. So now I have Angel Pink Fireworks Spray, which is a pale pink, but it's gonna have a nice shimmer. And I'm going to unscrew the cap and just kind of splatter a little bit of it on. I don't want a whole lot, but I do want to kind of bring out the pink that is in the background. I'm going to concentrate it a bit down at the bottom and just kind of let it let it be less and less as you go up. And that will become very shimmery when it's dry. I assembled my card off screen because it was just a matter of gluing everything together and you can see the shimmer from that fireworks spray and that tint of pink that we've put on our sentiment. And man, does that Twisted Citron look like it's glowing. <laughs> I hope it shows up on screen that way for you too. So I hope that you'll give this a try. Don't feel like you're boxed into doing something with this very organic looking style of stencil. Feel free to try it with whatever stencil you've got. Just, you know, keep those shadows coming from the same direction so that it looks cohesive. And make sure you show it to me. I'd love to see what you do. And if you're interested in seeing how I do it with other mediums, don't forget to leave a comment about that below because I would love to, uh, to make a video based on what medium you'd like me to use. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic day. Be well, stay safe, peace out.